universe of mathematics, there are many mathematical disciplines. For example, the topologist that is concerned about the properties of objects when we twist and stretch and deform them. The graph theorist is interested in points or vertices and what happens when we connect them to create networks. And the algebraist studies symbols or expressions and how we can manipulate them. And a question that's often perplexed me is, what ties all of these disciplines together? What's the underlying thread? And an answer that was proposed to be by a man named Sean Plott was that all of them involve rigor and logic. You see, they each have a starting point and they work their way down the page line by line with structure and reasoning in such a way that you can't disagree with this line or the next until we reach some grandiose conclusion. The only difference then is that they have different starting places. But I didn't really find this answer to be satisfactory because it feels like there's a more meaningful answer to the uncovered. And today I would like to try and discover this answer with you. And I think the best way to do so is with a mathematical problem. This problem is about combinatorics. Combinatorics, broadly speaking, is the mathematics of counting. So the combinatorial list will be interested in things like, oh, how many ways can I get from A to B? Or how many ways can I line up the group of people? So this problem will be about how many ways can I do a thing in general? Not too far from the studio, there are some stairs, 10 to be exact, and let's suppose you're at the top of these stairs and you want to get down. Now, the sensible civil member of society will go down each step one by one, but I, the cheeky chap that I am, may dare to go down two steps at a time with a jump. And we're also banning sliding down the road because it's not as cool as it looks. So if we're only allowing steps and jumps, i.e. going down the stairs one step or two steps at a time, how many ways can I get to the bottom? Hmm. And so that's the problem. And then there's kind of a problem with the problem because it's not immediately obvious what we can do. And I think this state of confusion and uncertainty illustrates a certain beauty in mathematics. Earlier in your mathematical life, surely you've been given questions where you have some kind of mechanism, unwieldy, and you're just turning the hand around and around until an answer gets spat out. But in these kinds of problems, it's not clear what tools, what mechanisms we can use. And I think that this makes the questions more interesting. By being forced to be creative, we can often stumble upon some nice ideas, some elegant solution perhaps. And in a rare and wonderful moment, we can come across the lovely underlying mathematics. Okay, here's an idea. We could try breaking up the problem into how many ways can we get down with a certain number of steps and a certain number of jumps? For example, at one extreme, we can get down the stairs by taking steps only. And on the other extreme, we can take five jumps down. So at the very least, we have two ways to get down the stairs. We're off to a good start, gang. Now, let's consider maybe, what if we have one step and eight, one jump and eight stairs? How many ways can we get down there? And it might start to get a bit trickier now because it's hard to keep account of all of the ways we found. And it's hard to know once we're done with all of the ways we found. And so it might be worth trying to translate the problem into something slightly different. So if we think of these steps as squares, so each time I'm taking a step down, there is a square. And alternatively, if I'm jumping, I'm going to represent it with a rectangle, like so. And so the question becomes, how many ways can I order one rectangle and eight squares together? And it turns out it's quite easy to figure out there's nine ways because we're just shuffling along this domino. And that's pretty cool. Now, what happens if we have two jumps and six steps? And now it starts to get even harder because we're going to start encountering difficulties. Let's suppose that we try and figure out the number of ways by taking any one of these previous solutions and then trying to map a bunch of merge rather, a bunch of squares to make dominoes. Pretty good. And then you might say, okay, well, we've got seven there. If we just do it for the rest of them, we'll be done, right? 
So let's say we do it with the last one as well. Now, here, come, here enters a themed in combinatorics known as double counting. As we can see, we've actually made the same pattern twice and we've counted them as individual ways to get downstairs. And this is no good because we're making a, 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 a bloated number of ways to get down. And okay, maybe we can try and sort it out, but double counting is hard to account for because it's hard to know when we've double counted. And so maybe we can wade through this, but then we have to deal with three jumps and four jumps and maybe we should just call this plan a bust. So we tried a thing and it didn't exactly go to plan, but that's okay. Sometimes we run ourselves into a ditch and the way forward looks a bit icky, but we can still try and salvage this attempt by thinking about what would have made this way work. And actually, if we try lower values, less stairs, we might be able to find a pattern that will reveal how many ways we can get down 10 stairs. So I'm going to introduce a bit of notation, fear not. Let's suppose there are n stairs and n is just a number and we're descending the n stairs. Then let's say that the number of ways to do to send those n says is f of n. And we want to figure out what f of n is. So we're going to try with really nice, happy numbers, and then we'll see if there's a pattern going on here. So let's suppose we have one stair. How many ways can we get down? Obviously one, we just take a step. There's not enough steps for a jump. We can't jump down one stair. Let's suppose n is two. There are two stairs. Now it's getting interesting. You can go down with two steps or a jump. And n equals three it may, might take a bit more work, but when the dust settles, we find there are three ways to get down. Now, so far, so good, I would say. It looks like for each stair there is, there's a way to get down. But we can use what we found before to know that this is wrong, because earlier we found that there are at least 11 ways to get down these stairs. And so, uh, 11 ways to get down 10 stairs rather, and so we know that we have to keep searching. This thing which we thought didn't really work out has actually given us the insight to keep searching. Okay, let's keep going then. N equals four, there's four steps. Hmm. So we could go down with only steps. We can fit one domino three times if we only have one jump and two steps. Alternatively, there's now enough st stairs to take a two jumps. <coughs> So it turns out there's five ways. We shouldn't forget n equals zero. Zero steps, it's a bit weird to think about, but it turns out it's quite useful to say that there's one way to get down zero stairs, I'm already there. So let's add that on. And then lastly, five's a bit more laborious. I think we can handle it. it turns out there's eight ways to get down. And now it might start to look quite promising because if we calculate these, we get a pattern which you might well recognize, the Fibonacci sequence. And just so we're all on the same page, the Fibonacci sequence is when the first two terms are one and the subsequent terms are the sum of the previous two. So for example, two is one plus one, three is two plus one revolutionary maths. <coughs> now, this might be a bit of a shock. Um, the Fibonacci sequence very rarely rears its head in common forests. So you might reasonably ask, what on earth is this guy doing here? Um, and it turns out there's quite a nice solution. So, picture this. You're at the top of a staircase with n stairs below. How many ways can you get down? Well, we either have to take a step first or a jump. If we take a step first, then there are n minus one stairs to go. And if there are, oops, and if there are n minus one stairs to go, then there will be f of n minus one ways to get down. Alternatively, if we take the jump first, there'll be f of n minus two ways to get down because we have n minus two sets left. And there's no other ways to get down the sets. We have to either take a step or a jump first. And that gives us a really nice Fibonacci sequence. And I think that's kind of neat, that's kind of nice. Um, and so, for those who are curious, it turns out the number of ways to get down the 10 sets from earlier is 89. And maybe we could have brute forced that, I personally wouldn't. But I think also doing it in this way has revealed a beautiful pattern which we otherwise wouldn't have found with mere brute force. 
because we can also extend this to other values. Suppose I have 100 stairs that I want to get down. There's a few more options. And we don't have to check the 354 sextillion ways to get down, because we know with the power of math that we're right. So where does that leave us? This leaves us with the question, what do all of the mathematical disciplines have in common? What's the glue that binds them together? You might agree still that rigor and logic are involved, but I think the more meaningful answer is that all of these disciplines are exploring patterns of the universe. Furthermore, <laughs> this shows the power and flexibility of mathematics. As Steven Weinberg once said, it is positively spooky how the physicist finds the mathematician has been there before him or her. Mathematicians are exploring all kinds of abstract systems, n-dimensional space, and often the physicist wonders, why on earth is this useful? The mathematician, of course, replies, just plug in n equals three. Um, and as Richard Feynman put it, I find it quite amazing that it is possible to predict what will happen by mathematics, which is simply following rules which really have nothing to do with the original thing. Maths is more than a set of abstract rules, rules of a game we're following. Maths is a way to model the world even if we don't know it. Thank you very much. <laughs>